welcome to Gethsemane Lutheran Church for our Sunday morning worship service. Our mission is to be engaged by God in a living faith at home, at church, and in the world. And we hope that through these services, we help you to be part of that mission. We encourage you to connect with us through our website at glconline.org and let us know how we can help you on your journey. Now, let us worship together. Welcome to worship at Gethsemane Lutheran Church. We are grateful that you found us online and encourage you to check back regularly for updated information about our virtual education, worship, and fellowship events for worshipers of all ages. At 10 o'clock a.m. today, Sunday, December 6th, we're hosting a virtual coffee hour. You can find the Zoom link on our website or on the email link that you received for this service. We'll be having these virtual coffee hours on the first Sunday of each month going forward. So if you aren't able to join us today, please check back on January 3rd for an opportunity to engage in some fellowship time with your church family. Next Sunday, December 13th, is our next outdoor worship service with communion at 9.30 a.m. in the South parking lot. There's a shortwave radio signal so that you can stay in the comfort of your warm car and listen to the service on your radio. So don't let the weather stop you from participating. You are invited to join in an Advent Bible study on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. This is a unique time of guided meditation and reflection as together we listen for God in the scriptures and artwork that has been created in their image. There's no experience necessary to participate, and everyone is welcome. You can simply follow the Zoom link made available on our website and in the Tuesday email. Also available in the Tuesday email will be a link for a devotion with music and poetry from this sacred season of waiting. Our need of the month is Toy Chest Partnership with ICA. You are invited to bring a new unwrapped toy for children 0 to 18 to our Need of the Month barrel. 
If you prefer to make a financial donation, it will be used to purchase gift cards and gifts for age groups that are harder to shop for. We are grateful for all of the work that ICA does in our community and for the opportunity to partner with them. We look forward to connecting with you virtually at this time. But at any time throughout the week, if you have a prayer request or a need, or you would just like to check in with somebody in the church office, please give us a call and we are available to you. Because together, we are the church. And now let us worship the Lord. I dream of the first pitch of opening season. I dream of a laundry day where each sock finds its mate. I dream of a family home for the holidays. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with the windows down. These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of conversations across party lines. I dream of more bridges and less walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. Today we light the candle of peace. May it remind us that there is another way. Amen. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. However, more often than not, we are a swirling com compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-referenced to-do lists. So today, we ask your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday comes to us from the book of St. Mark, the first chapter starting with verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it was written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. 
Now John was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. What do you assume the dream of John the Baptist was? Standing out there in his wilderness, in the camel hair coat, chewing on a locust, sipping on some honey? Do you suppose that he maybe dreamed of a better lunch? Maybe something less pungent to wear around his neck? He was crying out in the wilderness. People were flocking from all over to listen to him, and he was proclaiming a baptism of repentance, repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Do you think he was dreaming about a community that would be reconciled with one another, with God? He was telling them that someone much greater than he was coming, someone he wasn't even worthy to untie the sand love, and would baptize them not with water, for forgiveness, but with the Holy Spirit. What do you imagine they thought that would actually do? Oh, I bet John had dreams, a few hopes, several wishes. I bet they were more than just that he would have something better to eat in the day, next day. And people by the thousands were coming to him, multitudes flocking from all over, boatloads coming down from Jerusalem. I bet they had dreams. I bet they had hopes. Why else would they travel so far to see him? Some kook standing on a rock in the desert, dunking people in this muddy river. I can just imagine the dreams that they had. We all have dreams, it seems. Things that we wish for, ways we wish things were different than what the reality we're currently standing in is. Theologian Patricia de Jong wrote, At Advent, God's people summon the courage to actually have spiritual strength to remember that it's times like these that the holy breaks in to our daily life. In tiny ways, we can open our hearts and for the healing grace of God who opens them with his peace. Today, we lit the peace candle in our Advent wreath. Peace. I mean, what some would call another pipe dream in our world. After all the national divisions in our country that the elections highlighted, the divisions from the racial justice protests, arguments over whether we should mask or not mask, a little peace, a little goodwill, seems like a pretty good dream for Advent. Dreaming of when we can actually stand face to face in relationship with our neighbor rather than dropping tweets and emails into that electronic abyss of opinion. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of our sin? That sounds pretty darn good right now. Maybe John was on to something, onto our need to be mindful of our relationships with one another. Mindful of how God calls us to live, loving our neighbor more than ourselves and especially more than our own opinions. A baptism of repentance and turning back to God who gave us his son to be born among us. Not in some highfalutin place, but right here in the brokenness of our very world. This, this is where we need peace. Peace. It wasn't, it wasn't at times just like this that the prince of all peace was to be born. Born specifically so that we might dream of better days. That we might know of one who actually accomplished peace, not through dominance and superiority, but through his own self-sacrifice, his own humility. Born so that we could stand and shout for justice and no one who gave justice, not instilling it with an iron fist, but by bringing reconciliation 
to all people, with God and with one another, through love. On this second Sunday of Advent, I think it's important that we hear from John the Baptist in the wilderness because even there, even here in our, this new reality, in our living rooms and by your kitchen table, we can know that there's a spirit of God at work to strengthen us and actually give us the ability to dream of peace. These struggles seem like, well, they've gone on forever. The most common reference of wilderness in the Hebrew scriptures is one of the Israelites who had to travel in it for 40 years. Wilderness was not meant to be a place of human habitation. It was considered a natural habitation of demons instead. In traditional interpretations, wilderness was depicted as a daunting place, a menacing place that had to be conquered and defeated. However, there's a theologian named Dolores Williams. She has a different vision of wilderness, one rooted more in the experience of, well, enslaved people. Remains in the traditions of many of our African American churches. Rather than a place to be feared, wilderness, she reinterpreted through a lens of the biblical character Hagar. Because with Hagar, Wilderness became a place of both struggle and the Holy Spirit, both facing problematic but facing promise. For in the wilderness, that's where Hagar met God. Williams writes, The wilderness is a positive place because it becomes conductive to uplifting the spirit and to strengthen one's religious life. These symbolic wilderness places, Williams writes, enables us to hear the sounds of our ancestors who navigated all those difficult terrains in their lifetimes, preparing the way for generations to come to hear God's word that Christ might be born again. Perhaps understanding wilderness as a space where faith could be cultivated and strengthened is why all those people from Jerusalem went to see John out there in the wilderness. They were drawn to a man on the margins who still had something to stand for and to shout out and proclaim a different vision of our world. Some of you may remember that a few years back, John, artist and photographer John Noltner, who is a friend of mine, presented his collection of portraits and stories from people whom he asked to share what gave them a sense of peace. He put it together in a collection called A Peace of My Mind Project. At the heart of the project was John's own dream, where he quoted, in a world that asks us to focus on the things that separate us, a piece of my mind invites us to explore the common humanity that connects us. Working on this for over 10 years now, he realized that the collective dreams people share that they flock to are best discovered out in the wilderness. The wilderness of our lives, of our cities, our small towns, and our homes. To capture that and to lift up those voices that are still crying out, John and his wife actually recently sold their house and bought an RV so they could travel all over those back roads of America and collect these voices. Interestingly, during this time of pandemic, of social unrest and division, he found a collective dream that America holds. One shared, community means coming together under shared feelings of loss and reimagining new worlds for a better reality. Another expressed how, in difficult times, we have learned perseverance, resilience, and strength. Now we must continue to learn and grow and be there for one another. Together, many found strength standing together. One wrote, I found strength in the midst of struggle by helping those whose struggles were more challenging than my own. Lastly, so many found the peace that we seek comes from outside of us. 
They quoted from John 14, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, I give to you. Let your hearts, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Where there is peace, there is freedom. Again and again, John Noltner heard people sharing this dream that unites us, that we long for peace together. Advent is that time when we pray for that peace in our troubled lives and in our world. But we need to shout it into existence by realizing that we're not praying this prayer alone. Advent is the time when we cry out together in the wilderness of our lives so that collectively we can prepare for God to be born anew within us each and every day. Theologian Patricia de Young concluded her thoughts on Advent in this way. And so we do not lose heart. Rather, we live with our hearts broken open so that compassion and caring and God's reckless love can find its way into our heart and into the heart of the world together, making straight in our hearts a highway, a highway that's possible for peace. This, my friends, is our prayer on this second Sunday of Advent as we stand together and continue to pray, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Heal, hear our prayers for people in every need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the faith of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balanced ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend to those who are struggling with addiction or depression. Remember those before you who are among us who are sick, mourning, or recovering from illness. We remember especially this week, Scott Allen. And we pray for each of our individual concerns. We lift up to you in the silence of our hearts. Comfort their hearts and gather all your people in your healing embrace. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even disparities among your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together the words our Lord taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you go, may you have the strength to dream. May you have the humility to listen.
May you have the confidence to trust and may you have the conviction that the body of Christ for our best dreams are those we dream together. In the name of God, the original dreamer, Jesus, the dream come true, and the Holy Spirit who enables us to be those who dream. Amen.